Hey, hello everybody. Today we're going to discuss about the moving average. We have the volume weighted average, which is very respectful. We have the simple moving average, 9, 10, 20, 50, 120, and 200. How useful are these moving average? When to use them and how to use them? Are they garbage? I can tell you they are very important. Now, would I use them to enter a trade? The answer is no. I would not use them solely to enter a trade without looking at two other indicators. And I will go over those indicators in this video. So make sure you watch to the very end. Okay, now let's not waste any time. Let's dive into this. So let's go over this trade. I use the volume weighted average right here on my chart, which is the green line. We're looking at a five minute chart right now. Pull that over. That's the green line. And then I have the SMA 10. Actually, this is a exponential moving average, which means it will move based on how the price changes. Therefore, it's more accurate than, the, than just the simple moving average. So I got that. The orange line, I'm going to turn on my indicator so you can see what color the setting. So I got the yellow, which is EMA 10. 20 was the orange and then red is the 120. Now, specifically for the daily, I use the 200 and I'll explain that later. This is our daily chart, five minute, one minute, and 15 seconds. Some people use a 10 second. Now let's go over the moving average first. How important are they? I say they're very important, but I would not use them to make a trade without seeing other indicator. And I'll go over what other indicator I'm talking about, which is very important. Okay. Let's let's go over the uh the, the moving average first. Okay. Now the volume weighted average, how I would use them. I would use the volume weighted average to see if it's bullish stock or if it's bearish stock. Okay. I would not trade if it's under the volume weighted average. If it's moving around, up and down, close to the volume weighted average, I would also not make a trade because usually that's when it's consolidating. I don't trade when the stock is consolidating because it's hard to predict which way it's going to move next. I'll explain that later. So these are all important concepts. These are uh, things that you have to really understand if you were to not lose money in the market. And then for the SMA, nine i will use it on the one minute chart now why because if you look at this when a stock is bullish the sma nine is the support line you see how every time it go down it bounce right back up look at this imagine me making all this money using that now when do i use it i don't just use it anytime because you do see it falling below that right i use the sma nine when a stock just broken out stock broke out squeeze up i would use that to buy pullback okay for example like this okay stock break out come back down see this is pretty strong because it doesn't even hit the sma9 it bounce right back up and up and up right right here you got to break out pull back bounce back and another run remember i told you i use it with another indicator that other indicator is right here the volume i always look at the volume profile the pullback I want to see low volume red, high volume green. Okay, so the buying, there's more buyer than seller. Okay, there's more buying and selling. So it will have a higher probability of going up low volume on these two red candle high volume on the way back up, right? Okay, now when you get to the top, look what happened. These volume are equal. So by just by looking at the volume, I can tell that, hey, you know, we're hitting the peak right here. Okay? We're hitting the peak. First, you got a doji right on top. A doji tell you of indecision and then you have these high volume red candles. So if I would go long, I would not go right here. Okay, well, what about the SMA20? How do I use that? The SMA20 tell me that, hey, once a stock fall below the SMA9 and hit the SMA20, that means that that stock is now bearish. You can see right here, once it hit the SMA20, the stock become bearish. Okay, which is the orange line. That's one way to do it. Okay, now, again, the stock is above the SMA 9, and we have bullish. Moving up and up. The stock below the SMA 20, bearish. Bullish, okay? Now, then you would ask me, well, Mike, how do you know when to, and I don't have it on here, but let me add it. Let me add to my chart, the MACD. Let's add the MACD. Sorry guys, this uh, this graph right here is for demo. My actual, the actual one that I use have um, MACD. Okay, so MACD, now let me show you, okay? You see this part, this area? The MACD is red, right? Now that's another thing. Do not trade when the MACD is red. I'll go with this stock. This stock is not easy to trade and I'll explain later on. This stock actually moved about 500% 
on Friday, which is yesterday. Uh, even though it moved that much, trader could lose money if they're not careful. And uh, actually, uh, I did trade uh, in this area, which I, I made uh, a bit of money on Friday, live trading uh, on that break. When it get to these areas, it, it started getting tricky. Start being tricky, harder to trade. When you get to the open, look what happened at the open. You got to pop up, right? Pull back the SMA uh, 9 and it could not break that level. Try consolidate. This is why I don't buy consolidation because you don't know where it's going to move next. Look, I move up and flush. You see what I'm saying? That's why I say this stock is hard to trade because uh, this is clearly a false breakout. A lot of traders could lose money right here where you have a breakout and you think, oh, it's going to move. You got in, boom, flush. You see what I'm saying? That's false breakout. Now, if a stock had done this once, it's going to have a ten tendency to do this again and again. What happened right here is that you have a big seller holding his shares. Could be a hedge fund. It could be one of the investors. It could be the owner. Who know? Okay. But they have some good amount of shares that they're willing to just sell market price. Now, the stock is up 500%. Come on, you know, if you hold and share, you're just waiting for it to move up and you just sell the bid. Bam, you see? And let me show you again. It does it again. It does it a little bit right here. Okay. Try to run again. Another top and tail. Blush. You see that? Okay. And then it make this move all the way up and look. Flush. You see? So whoever's holding this share, they're very smart. They let the retail trader get in, get in, get in. And then right on top, they sell flush okay try again flush again I don't know I mean how many times are you gonna take this kind of abuse you know uh, that's the problem of beginner trader you know they they took high risk even though there's money to gain in this area which is squeezed up and then guess what it's like those buyer they, they're holding the share back and just let the retail work 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 and then they let go of that entire amount of share look a million share traded right here volume weighted average we went through how useful is SMA 50s I did tell you I trade an SMA 120 it's even more respectful than the volume weighted average now this is good for people who like to buy dips okay so if I were to buy dips I would use this line right here if I would buy dips on, on this kind of trade why wouldn't I use the volume weighted average everybody's gonna use the volume weighted average and this market maker want to text those guy out what do they do okay they're gonna push the price down you got in the volume weighted average guess what happened this guy push it down so you stop out lose your money and then they bring it right back up but if you use the SMA 120 guess what happened it's a better support so you get better entry you see now I don't buy dips anymore okay because you have to be willing to hold a losing trade that's very hard to do to see your money go down when you buy dip for example if you buy if you buy right here you'll be green up here but you also be red right here and you have to be willing to hold for that move back up. Now, that took a lot of guts. When I enter, I enter with a large size. So I could not afford to hold a large position going down because I can see I could be down a couple thousand. It worked for some people, but it does not work for me. Okay, so we that's how we look at the SMA 120. Now the SMA 200, how do I use that? Okay, now let's go to the daily chart. The SMA 200, I use it specifically on the daily chart. Why? Because the SMA 200 usually is a strong support or a strong resistance for a stock. So let's say if a stock move up and it and the SMA 200 is above it, that's gonna act as a resistance. Okay, usually hit that and bounce back down. Okay, well on this day. Okay. Now, some stock will favor different type of uh, those simple moving average. Some of them favor 120, some of them favor 200, depending on how many people use uh, that indicator. And this stock, uh, they probably use 120 moving averages. And then I would want to see just the 200. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, I put the wrong indicator, but as you can see, perfect right exactly what happened hit this line come right back down could not hold the SMA 200 I did promise you that I will give you a trade secret on how to trade these moving averages how to use them let's say if a stock hit the SMA let's see if I want to enter a stock you need to meet the certain criteria right <clears throat> okay I did tell you that if a stock break out pull back the spot to trade uh, an entry 
is to buy that pullback at the SMA 9. The indicator that I would use to look to see if I should enter a trade is the volume. Okay, do I have buyer coming in at this level? Now, if I see a lot of buyer, now I haven't explained to you my um, time of sale of, of the level two over here. We don't see it right here because it's, uh, it's not trading right now, but you will see the time of sale. You will see the level two. Now, is there a lot of volume coming in, a lot of buyer coming in at that level? If there are, and my MACD is showing me that it's green, my volume showing me that it's coming in. For example, not this case. This case, this volume is red on a high volume red candle. So I would not be entering right here. But if I see a lot of buyer coming in after the breakout, the first pullback, or the second or the third, whichever, <coughs> that have high volume coming in, at the SMA 9, MACD is green, I will lightly take that trade. Now, if I took a trade, let's say if I enter right here, where would my stop be? My stop would be if it dropped below the red candle right next to it to keep a tight stop loss because the next part, spot that it will go to is the SMA 20. Now I should never hold if it dropped below the SMA 20 because what did I say earlier? Once it's below the SMA 20, it become bearish and I could lose money. You see what I'm saying? You see the thing? The setup is very, very important, okay? You need to readjust every time stock moving, you need to readjust and calculate your risk. Particularly, this is very important. If a stock is pulling back below your entry, just get out. Get out. So if you enter with a thousand share and you down, I would say like your max loss is two hundred. Two hundred dollars your max loss. Now if you down fifty dollar, I would just get out. Now if the stock move back up, you can always get back in. Okay, but if you stop pulling back and you start losing money, 25, 30, 40, get out. Done. You know? And that way you didn't hit your maximum loss per trade and in the long run your profit is higher than your losses so your P&L ratio is positive now I'm gonna create more video like this it's gonna go into deeper into profit to loss ratio strategy how to use the level 2 and I will put the same kind of analysis that I'm doing with the SMA that way you can understand not only the SMA the volume weight average but you understand how to use them that's what's important how to draw a trend line there's obviously opportunity right here let me show you this now I'm gonna make a separate video for this but look at this this is a trend line once it break the trend you will take an entry with a stop loss below the, the trend line and look at this see how that okay if you want to learn something like this hit the subscribe button follow if you like the video and I will do a separate video where I will show you how to draw a trend line where to enter where to exit okay this is one of my favorite setup okay guys Thank you for watching my video and remember to click the subscribe button. If you don't, at least hit the like button. That will help me a lot. That will help encourage me to make more video like this that help other traders like yourself that need this kind of help. Don't forget to follow me live every morning where I find stock and trade stock like this every day. Live, free, right here on YouTube. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.